The Art of War of the Visions from Rojo A. He is the main character designer that instructs a number of artists to get the maximum out of each illustration as possible. Today we're going to look at the character art style design and animations of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. War of the Visions is a tactical RPG that has a massive cast of characters and regularly introduces sets of new guest characters from other Final Fantasy series. The story takes place on the continent of Ardra during the War of the Visions prior to the original Brave Exvius. We follow the main protagonist Mond, who rarely sees his fearful continent united than in War of Dominance. Despite, after an attack on Princess Marjorie near his kingdom's borders, he is forced to step up and become stronger, especially because there are rumors floating around that he is the potential successor of the throne instead of his twin brother. Even though the art team gets specific directions on the character designs from the game developers, the room for creative freedom is apparent. Luigi stated in the interview that in the end all that matters is to create likable designs. And it shows, especially when we look at the promotional event art, which are drawn as if they capture a moment of a small story, such as raid balls of summons like Fenrir, Diablos and Titan, or others that contain chocobos, thumbberries or even chocobo meteors falling from the sky. And, of course, holiday inspired events such as Easter, Thanksgiving and Christmas. The team deliberately designed a distinct appearance for each kingdom. This way all factions have their own style and clothes, ornaments and overall color palette. When we zoom in, the eye style is clearly a variation from Akiko Yoshida's Final Fantasy Tactics, whose works were actually the base of these designs. The team noted that they want to make sure that they didn't create inferior copies, and I think they nailed it. Anyways, the absence of a nose is also familiar to this regard. That said, they do indicate the nose bridge with highlights. Besides that, the male character upper body is quite broad compared to the thin baseline, while the females have relative long legs and a good volume on the hips. An hourglass shape, let's say. In my opinion, they do go quite far with the broadness of the shoulders in some of these illustrations. Nonetheless, the character's height and limb size have quite realistic proportions. This creates more believability and weight to war story types of games. What I really like is that even with the huge character roster, they really tend to show the character's personality by giving them a dynamic or powerful body posture. To that right, even if I don't know this particular dude, he seems to be a skilled warrior. Even so, the first thing that really resonates with this art style is the highly saturated color palette. There are many subtle changes in the brightness of each piece, mainly done with shifting hues and tones to give this popping effect and the song emphasizes on highlights. In one of Roy's art videos, he shows that he uses a lot of grayscale to keep the contrast of his composition intact. Because if we look at the illustrations, you can see the focus points are mainly on the head, upper body and hands. Other aspects such as the feet and the rear are always less expressed and thus contain cooler hues and darker tones. The line art has a variety of thickness, using mainly dark brown as a base. Furthermore, some parts contain darker, thicker or faded lines to either give emphasis on or differentiate that particular area from the rest. This style uses line hatching mainly on the clothes to create more volume and depth. The main takeaway is, there are a lot of curves and arch strokes to present the characters to be dynamic and alive. Because this game is massive and new characters keep getting introduced all the time, I want to highlight our favorite Final Fantasy cast. First let's look at Final Fantasy Tactics. One could debate if this style is a natural evolution of the original. I will say the main difference is the light to color palette whereas Final Fantasy Tactics uses darker tones. Let's check out the rest. What I like is that they kept the original Yoshitaka Amano's imaginative costume designs well intact, with some characters carrying small little ornaments and accessories. Furthermore, the over decorative weapons are kept true to the original form as well. Despite this, one character is particularly different than the rest, and that is Kefka. They actually added a nose to his sleazy expression. Also, the works of Tetsuya Nomura are well defined. I think they did a good job on the Final Fantasy VII cast, portraying Klaus and Barry's tough guy appearance and the spirit and energy of Aerith and Tifa. And when we glance at Titus and Yuna, it's clear that they knew how to deliver their upbeat energy of their personalities. And this is what I like about the Final Fantasy franchise. It's so well established, whatever the style. They can just recreate these characters in a convincing way. I mean, even knock the spills of his emo look into something badass. Because there are many cameos of different series, there are also Persona characters in this style, which actually, with their masks on, do resemble the original art well. Furthermore, 2B and 9S from Nier were also illustrated, with the natural progression of even including Lara Croft in on the action. I'm Fancy Light Novel author GP Fuchs, and if you ever played the original Final Fantasy Brave Extras, then you must know how frustrating it can be to get the newest OP characters. Nevertheless, I always had the weirdest luck on my side to get diamonds. If I only could use this luck for important stuff. Anyways, if you want to see more similar type of art designs, I recommend my Final Fantasy Tactics video. And be sure to check out my RPG inspired books on my author page, and like this video if you want to see more in-depth stuff of manga artists of our favorite video games.